Hi guys. So the plan today is to go down, down to Stamberg. There's probably many different ways uh, to go there, depending which kind of bike you use. There's better parts for the road bike, and then if you're just with, with bikes like the ones we have, I, I've got my mountain bike, the other guys have the touring bikes, then there's probably better parts to go. And today it looks like we're gonna go through some forest area, but we're not entirely sure yet, so let's make it a surprise. Yeah. Let's start? Let's start, that's okay. yeah. good. <laughs> So now we made it to Lake Starnberg, as you can see in the back, it's a, it's a beautiful day today and we'd like to take the opportunity and introduce the, the facts about Lake Starnberg to you. So Starnberg is a city which is actually next to the lake, but there's also obviously other smaller cities and towns around the lake and Starnberg is mainly known to people who live in Munich as the city where Houses are expensive and life in general is pretty good. <laughs> is it true that the football players of Bayern Munich are living here? Um, probably there are some rumors, so, right? Some of them, some of them probably live here. Yes. Okay. I, I guess I guess they share Lake Starnberg and then Lake Tegernsee between the Greenwald. The Greenwald as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver Kahn is living in Greenwald. Yeah. Once we were cycling, we saw Oliver Kahn. He was running actually. Right? Running with a yeah. nice yeah, young exactly. lady. Yeah. <laughs> so the lake is uh, really close to Munich, actually. We cycled here today and it took us around about what, one and a half hours maybe. Yeah, but we took our time, so you can make it uh, less less time than that. But um, it's close enough for Munich people to come here, even on an evening after after a day of work. People come here, but mainly on the weekends, obviously. Uh, the lake itself is about 20 kilometers long and extends towards towards the Alps. So if you look towards the south, you can actually see the Alps as well, and including the Zugspitze, which is the highest mountain. In Germany. I think we will be also sharing some pictures right on our Instagram account. Exactly. With so the lake and mountain views, yeah, we will do that. Yeah. So if you want to see nice pictures, you should follow our Instagram account. Exactly, exactly. So Stefan, you are also coming from Bodense. It is like the basically biggest lake in Germany, right? How Absolutely. is the life there? I mean, if you compare living next to a lake, but what kind of life is that? I mean, personally, obviously, I lived there quite a while ago. But I remember when I when I was living there, you basically just take every opportunity to go out and uh, go swimming, just uh, just hang out by the lake, enjoy time in the sun with your friends. And I do have to say that sometimes I miss that kind of lifestyle. So it's always nice to come here to the surrounding lakes here, here in Munich. Mm -hmm. But do you prefer Lake Bodensee or? Samberger, well, naturally, I would say it's probably still uh, Lake Bodensee, which is my favorite, um, simply due to the fact that it's um, where I grew up, and it's personally, I, I just it just feels like home being there. Yeah, and it's also much bigger, right? It is. It is much bigger, de definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and you can go to different countries as well. You know, Bodensee is, uh, has shores with Austria and and Switzerland as well. Yeah. So what about, for example, nature? If you compare. Do you like uh, Stamberg, like uh, this area's nature in I, Bayern or I, more like around Bodensee? I definitely enjoy Stamberg as well because it's kind of cute and nice, you know, it's it's not as big as, as Bodensee obviously and that also has its uh, very um, specific nice touch to it, definitely. But the good thing with Bodensee, once I was also cycling around the lake and it was really nice, the good thing is when you were at the German side, then you are actually seeing the Swiss mountains. Yeah, that's true. The that's view true. is much nicer, I would say. Yeah. For me, it's really <laughs> yeah. better, yeah. yeah. I really like that. Yeah. 
That's, that's definitely true. Yeah. And there is one thing very special uh, about Bordeaux area, you can find really good wine, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, wine yards and everything. Yeah. yeah. Actually, in my in my village where I grew up, we do have we do have lots of lots of vineyards there, and, mm -hmm. and I'd like to say that the wine is pretty good there. Actually. And do your parents also yeah. have any wine yard? Um, unfortunately, not. Or maybe they haven't told me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, but uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have any any vineyards. But um, there's always some some friends, obviously, in the village who have who have their own wine, and then we can we can get wine from them as well, which is quite nice. Oh nice. You still have uh, a lot of friends from Bordeaux? Do you keep in touch with them? Yeah, obviously, a lot of friends uh, from back at, from back home who I went to school with, mm -hmm. for example, they live in different uh, places now as well. Yeah. But uh, in general, when I go back, there's always a handful of people mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still in touch with, and I. Yeah. I really enjoy meeting up with. Okay. Nice. nice. <laughs> Alright guys, so so talking about lakes, I know that you guys also from from uh, the water side basically. Um, Sedat comes from Izmir and Sedat comes from <laughs> <laughs> comes from Istanbul. So they also obviously have uh, past living next to next to water, which is something we have in common. Say that. What, what what was it like for you to to live there and your and to grow up in that kind of uh, area? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I don't know. It's really like special to live an area where you have a sea, a real one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it, it, this is something I used to miss a lot in Germany after moving to Munich at least. In the northern part of Germany, yes, there is Nordsee, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it was really nice in my hometown to live at the seaside you can drive half an hour to an hour and reach to a really nice beach and spend the weekends with your friends there uh, but apart from that i really need to admit that one thing is really nice here in munich the nature and what you can do in the nature with your friends so if we were in izmir right now i don't know a typical day would be like if you are not going to a beach you would be spending your time maybe at a starbucks or any other cafe <laughs> with your friends get them together and then basically sit and have your coffee. I, I don't remember that many times that I was cycling with my friends or going for a hiking in Izmir. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly like you go to a cafe and then if it is late afternoon or evening, you can go to a bar or I don't know, another cafe. You can go to a shisha place, it can be also nice. These are the main things, right? Mm -hmm. So that in yeah. Turkey, unfortunately we don't use the nature as much as German people do in here. Which is probably right. also because you guys are used to nice weather and used to the sun and it's not as special as it is for us, I guess. I think that's also true. Like right now in Izmir, uh, I was talking with my parents, yesterday it was 39 degrees. Oh, wow. So if you consider that, I mean, of course, in that temperature, you cannot actually cycle under mm -hmm. sun. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's actually a very good point. I mean, in Izmir, you don't want to go out especially in like May till end of September, you don't want to go out during the daytime because it's super hot. The only thing that you can do outside is, yeah, you can go into a beach and swim. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, maybe that's the reason why we were spending our times in the like shopping centers or different cafes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically in Istanbul, I would just go to a shopping mall in the day when it's really hot in summer. And then maybe after four o'clock, five o'clock, I would go out for a plane football or basketball with friends but uh, on the other hand I could also go to sea as well uh, in Kadikoy where I live uh, you, you have actually you are surrounded by the sea and basically when the weather is nice everybody is going there so at some point I don't want to go there because it's been so crowded yeah, okay yeah, yeah. so what I want to do like I want to go away from the seaside <laughs> and go to the places where there are less people in Istanbul Istanbul has like 17, 18 million populations, yeah. and uh, you want to always go to the places where there are less people. grab your bike and go somewhere to, mm -hmm. to cycle? Actually in Istanbul there are seven hills, okay. so it's not really convenient for cycling, 
uh, except the seaside. So you can always go to the seaside, you can really have maybe like 30, 40, 50 kilometers, you can yeah. have nice cycling paths. Mm -hmm. But except that if you want to go to the city inside, I would always say the main transportation is like, uh, would be like taking either metro or bus. Yeah, that, that's not really common in Istanbul. Okay. And I would say if you have a nice bike, you should protect it also very well <laughs> in yeah, Istanbul. That's risky. Yeah, that's So yeah, true. if you want to park it somewhere, uh, you can come back and maybe not see their your bike anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's not always also lately there. they have been building like nice cycling paths, but the thing is, still cycling is not a mean of transportation because the cycling paths are disconnected. Okay. So you can only go to some certain routes. Okay, yeah. Not all the parts of the city is connected with those proper ways. And in many areas you wouldn't want to share your like cycling pad with the cars because many people, many drivers unfortunately, they don't care about the cyclists. Yeah. Also the uh, sidewalks, yeah. they're already small. So there is no space for uh, people for cycling. Yeah. So yeah, that's also yeah. issue. But is there a rule that uh, cyclists can go on the pavement, like on the on the sidewalk? I think you are completely free in Istanbul where you want to go. There is okay. no rule at all. Okay. For me, I even saw a person yeah. in the highway in Turkey. Really? Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> wow. Like in Germany, uh, you wouldn't see yeah. anyone cycling in the highway because it's not allowed. Yeah. But in yeah, Turkey, I saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I also find in Germany is if you actually go on the pavement or mm -hmm. like on the, on the sidewalk, people will actually shout at you if you yeah. if you're on your bike. Because obviously they know that there is a bike lane somewhere, yeah, and they they wouldn't accept you being on the on the. You know, on the I sidewalk. think for us many things are more tolerated. I would say, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if I'm cycling on the sidewalk, that should be. Nobody would say anything. Yeah, nobody would say anything. But the thing is, in Germany, if you cycle, cars are going really uh, far from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Turkey, they wouldn't care. They, they have would respect, just yeah. go next to you, maybe. Mm -hmm. So you would get afraid and you would move to the right side. Yeah. But in Germany, you can just go from your your, your path and then there, you're in distance, like two meters, and you're fine. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think true. in Turkey, like if you ask people what they think, whether cyclers need to use the sidewalk or the road that cars are driving on, uh, I would say like 70-80% of the people would say that, yeah, you should you just use the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> it's more secure, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah. You can get hit by a car and <laughs> I don't know. It kind of makes sense, you know, if there's no bike lanes. Yeah. And... I think they're building. Lately it's getting better. Mm -hmm. Also like in Izmir, for I don't know, maybe 40-50 yeah. kilometers in the center from south to north. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's getting more and more popular, but compared to Germany, of course, it's but at the, thing the very is, early if, stage. If they make it better and we have more bike ways, I think the problem will be uh, if many people are starting to uh, ride bike from that path, it's going to get crowded. So we should really improve uh, the, the, the roads, like into the, I don't know, some other parts of the cities where people can choose uh, different paths and then it will be, I think, less, less crowded. For mm. cyclists, because you don't want to really cycle when there are a lot of people in, yeah. in one road. That's, yeah. that's true. I mean, Istanbul is a massive city, right? Exactly. So, how, do you think it's going to take much longer for them to to spread uh, bike lanes all, all over the city? I think there are more important uh, issues with Istanbul's transportation first. Yeah, okay. right? yeah. They they focus on uh, maybe building more metro uh, yeah. subways, lines, exactly, subways. Yeah. Mm. and of course it's like they, they have holistic approach. They have to. Uh, improve uh, many parts of tra transportation. Yeah, but yeah, they have to find good solutions for uh, for bikers. Mm, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. and also there are like some other things that you need to consider. There are so many historical buildings as well, mm -hmm. also areas. Yeah. So you cannot in Istanbul have a cycling path that goes along the coast in all the parts of Istanbul. It's not mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. There are always like historical buildings that you cannot do anything. So you need to go around. It's, I think, also geographically and historically a bit tough. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But yeah, in general, why not? One day maybe in Turkey we will also have good cycling paths so people can cycle more and more. That's the hope. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Or as you German say, like thumbs... <laughs> yeah. Thumbs yeah. pressed. Yeah, thumbs pressed. <laughs> yeah. In Germany for fingers crossed they use thumbs pressed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I, I press this. Wait, how do you say it? Ich drücke dir die Daumen. I press the, the thumbs for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dankeschön. Dankeschön. <laughs>
Alright, so Lake Starnberg is actually famous for one more thing, which is the fact that King Ludwig II died on the shores of this lake. Do you guys know who King At Ludwig II was? No, I don't know. I mean, I know that he was the king of Bavaria, Bavarian Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, but I actually don't know when he was leaving and whether he was the last king of Bavarian Kingdom or not. I don't know the details yet. So actually, the his, his reign lasted from 1864 until 1886 and 1886 unfortunately is also the year when he was found dead floating here in the lake and for those of you who don't know it King Ludwig II was also the guy who built castles among them Schloss Neuschwanstein which I hope most of you have heard of that's really beautiful it's it's really a nice castle, have you, yeah. Have you guys been there? I have yeah, been there yeah, a been couple there. of times. Yeah. Whenever I have a visitor, I'm just taking them. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you can have a video. I think many yeah. people know that yeah, because the yeah, uh, castle in the like Disney logo, I think that was mm. inspired by Schloss Neuschwanstein, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And I think... We, we will share. We will share yeah, the picture. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we should. Yeah. You can ask any foreigner who's visited Germany or who's visited Munich probably. And one of the first things they visit is Schloss Neuschwanstein. Yeah, they can't pronounce it, maybe, but they, <laughs> <laughs> but they've been there. Yeah. And for the King Ludwig, so was he living in Starnberg or? Yeah, he actually he actually ended up living here uh, in Starnberg. He was born in Munich, but uh, for quite a few years he lived in in Starnberg, and unfortunately, that's also where he died. I actually I remember when I was visiting the castle in Neuschwanstein. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading that. So they said that he had some mental issues at the end. That's why they moved him to here. Mm -hmm. So you think like it's really like because of the health issues or they just wanted to get rid of from King Ludwig and then basically gave him a passive location and I don't know, yeah. maybe poisoned him, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's probably it's always difficult to speculate, right, about, about these kind of things. But um, there are people who say that he might have been gay and that's why that's why he got moved here and you know they they wanted to get rid of him but yeah. you're probably never going to know exactly whether that was the case i think the rumors about like uh, him being gay came from um, in the schloss neuschwanstein the uh, neuschwanstein castle mm -hmm. uh, he has a room which is specifically dedicated to richard wagner okay i think he was known with his love kind of not love maybe but his admirer to Richard Wagner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Maybe. Rumors. We need to check that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>